So, you've just finished Summit. Congratulate. Wait, what's that level? Wait, 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 what is that? All right, all right. Now let's see what this is about. Ah, another heart. Cool, cool. So, now you've just finished go Oh, come on! Okay, so at this point you're probably wondering, when does this end? And the short answer is never. But the actual answer is whenever you choose to finish. Celeste is chock full of content that is not just fun and challenging, but can get quite ridiculous with the amount of time you can spend on it. Whether you're trying out levels deathless or finding ways to be as fast as humanly possible. Oh my, people have beaten this game in 26 minutes? Anyway, this game has achieved a ton of popularity solely due to the simple yet in-depth mechanics it has to offer. The movement in-game may only introduce three simple mechanics when starting off, but do not be fooled. In Celeste, the three mechanics the game teaches you right off the bat are grab, dash, and jump. The first important decision you have to make is, how do you want to control your character? You can use an Xbox controller, keyboard, mixture of both, or be like this streamer who's just better than everyone else. After choosing your controlling method, you need to choose how you're going to press these buttons. Trust me. It's better to set this up now before you get late into speedrunning this game and start having questions like why does this person have three jump buttons and what is a multi-boost button and what I say to that is don't question it. For now, just bear with me. We gotta get through all the boring stuff first before getting into the good stuff. But if you're confident in your layout and already have some of these buttons, jump to this time in the video to get into some mechanics. For simplicity's sake, I will only be focusing on controller and keyboard mappings that I have found to be common and helpful in more advanced speedrunning. It is important to preface that controls are completely up to you. There's so many ways to configure controls that will work even at top level play. I will merely be providing some common layouts for these two control methods. Also, there's two kinds of mappings you'll have to be worried about. There's menu button mapping and action button mapping. This game knows what it's about, so it gives you the option of changing how you can navigate the menu. This means we can have a quick button to do things like reset or return to map. Action mapping is what you're probably familiar with, just changing which buttons are grabbing or jumping and whatnot. Here's the default layout that the game gives you. Now, we're just gonna change a few things here. There we go. Notice that for both keyboard and controller, while keyboard may have its advantages with all the buttons it's capable of mapping, both are more than viable in helping you pull off advanced mechanics. In fact, out of the top 10 any percent runners as of the date of recording, six use controller. In the end, it's all about personal preference and what you're comfortable with. So let's talk about it. For movement on the controller, you have two options, D-pad or analog stick. I personally find more precision with a D-pad, but there are plenty of runners, some included in the top 10 any percent runner category, who like to use the analog stick instead. On keyboard, left or right-handed movement is also up to you. What you'll need are these buttons mapped. Two jumps, a dash, a grab, and a crouch dash, also known as a demo dash. Now moving on to menu mapping. Down and confirm will primarily be used for skipping all the cutscenes you'll encounter throughout the run. And trust me, there's plenty of them. It'll be much faster to press pause and the down and confirm binding instead of consciously pressing down and confirm as two separate inputs. Oh, and the button will also be used for it. Look, sometimes you're guaranteed to die. So you'll have to bite the bullet and save some time from the death by retrying as soon as you know a certain strat isn't going to work. This is done by just assigning the button to both down and confirm. Side note, this is a good time to talk about confirming your deaths. When you die, there is a screen wipe after the death animation has run its course. But if you hit confirm once you die, you'll skip part of the animation goes straight into the wipe transition which saves so much time you're guaranteed to take at least a few deaths in your runs even top players do so do yourself a favor and take the free time save oh and also if you'd like to map an up and confirm button to quickly access return to map that's cool too but i won't be covering any strats in this video that make use of it Whew. that was boring with controller configurations out of the way let's get into these mechanics the most important thing to do at this very moment, if you do not already have it done, is turn off screen shake. And maybe the photosensitive effects too. When you're lined in and focused on runs, you don't want to feel like you're in a blender the entire time. Please do yourself this favor. But if you like it, I'm not going to stop you. Anyway, back to mechanics. If you're watching this, you already know how dash, grab, and jump work. I hope. But there's a fourth one that we also need to acknowledge, momentum. 
the single most important mechanic in this game. You've definitely had a little taste of using momentum through your Celeste journey, I'm sure, but there's a lot more than meets the eye. Our introduction to advanced use of momentum starts with the humble super dash. You can get substantial height and a decent amount of distance by simply pressing dash followed by a jump in quick succession. Its cousin, the hyper dash, propels you much faster and farther in the direction you are pointing, but sacrifices height in order to do so. The only difference in execution for these dashes is that for a hyper, you must be in a crouched state in order to get hyper speed. To do this, you must diagonal dash into the ground and jump since a diagonal dash, either down right or down left, will place you in that crouched state. The use of each dash during speedruns is very important to distinguish. For example, a super in this case would allow you to get onto the following ground, but a hyper would ram you straight into the wall so don't do that there. But here, a super is just a bad idea for obvious reasons. So a hyper would be your go-to. Now, what if you could keep your dash in midair while in the middle of your super or hyper state? With proper timing, you can reap the benefits of a super or hyper, but also keep your dash. These dashes become known as extended supers and extended hypers. So when executing a super or hyper, you press jump and dash close to the same time. But if you dash first and delay your jump for the right amount of time, you can launch yourself into the air with super or hyper momentum, but you'll still be able to dash afterwards. Here are the specifics. The game checks to see if you're on the ground in order to give your dash back. This check lasts for four frames. While dashing, if you manage to jump after staying in contact with the ground for four frames, so the game can confirm you're on the ground, quote unquote, you will regain your dash but also have super hyperspeed carrying you through the air. Yada, yada, yada. The more important factor here is to practice. Get comfortable with the timing required to extend your dash. You'll be able to make much more dramatic leaps this way, which you're gonna wish you knew on your first playthrough of this game. There's one more layer to supers and hypers I'd like to introduce to you, and those are reverse supers and reverse hypers. While it may seem spooky at first, this mechanic is actually relatively simple. The same way you delay your extended supers and hypers is how you will do your reverses, except the key here is that you must press dash in one direction, then jump in the opposite. So the same principle applies. Dashing in one direction and jumping in the other will give you a reverse super, while dashing into the ground and entering the crouch state before jumping in the opposite direction will give you a reverse hyper. The primary use for reverses are to extend your dash in corners where you don't have enough space to do an extended hyper or super. In chapter 3a, you can use this mechanic to extend your super into another super here. And as for hypers, well, you can go a bit wild with these. But the most practical application for any percent is probably 5b. If you so choose to incorporate it over 5a, which I highly recommend in the long run, trust me. 5A is a hassle. 5B is just as much of a hassle, but shorter. But Mr. Sussy Imposter, you may ask, how does this work? Depending on how far you've gotten in the game, you may have seen another way of extending your hyper dashes. I won't say because of spoilers. You're taught something called a wave dash. While it's executed slightly different from a hyper dash, the end result is mechanically the exact same. You take a slight leap into the air, aim down right, dash into the ground, and jump at just the right moment to regain your dash. The only differentiating factor from hyper dashes is the starting height of each mechanic. Despite their similarities, there are many different use cases where it is more convenient to simply dash into the ground from a certain height instead of waiting to land before executing a hyper. Most notably, in the very beginning of Chapter 3A, there are three long rooms you must get past before getting to the resort. You can hyper all the way to the resort or... By timing your dashes properly, you can start with a hyper and continue repeatedly with wave dashes. Many of the times you may use a wave dash over a hyper are when you're already in midair but need to execute an extended dash quickly, and you may not have enough room to land and execute an extended hyper. Being able to distinguish when you need a hyper or wave dash is key to streamlining movement in a speedrun. Now, time for another lesson on momentum. When you execute a short hyper followed by a jump when Madeline hits the ground, you'll see her enter this adorable crouch animation in midair, as long as you're still holding down or downright. 
More importantly though, you'll notice that your speed from the hyper is maintained, yet your distance and height have been substantially increased. At least for a short amount of time. The reason this works is that jumping functions in a weird way. You may have noticed how speedrunners get through prologue by hopping repeatedly. When jumping, Madeline gets a plus 40 speed boost forward, which is enough to save about a second in prologue alone. This concept also applies to hops after a hyper. If you recall how traffic blocks give you momentum, you may also remember these guys. Knowing what happens when using a hyper bunny hop and knowing what happens when you hyper off of a Kevin, what do you think will happen when combining these aspects together? What's happening is that your hyper gives you momentum. Then the movement of the Kevin tacks on more momentum. And finally, and craziest of all, if you're hyper bunny hopping, the bunny hop portion adds the momentum of the Kevin again to your momentum. So you're getting two boosts from the Kevin with this execution. Big speed means smaller number means higher up on the leaderboard, got it? In conclusion, momentum is kinda broken in Celeste. Especially since speed is uncapped in Celeste, so you get some crazy mods that really exploit the full potential of this. Moving on! It's time to highlight the rest of the weird mechanics this game has to offer, which are not necessarily momentum based. You see all those buttons I had to configure? Yeah, we're gonna make use of them now. Let's start with this demo button. What are we demoing? Why is it called a demo? Uh, good question. This person named Demo Jameson found it and also created the speedrun tool, which is something you should definitely download if you want to do even more precise practice and timings for rooms and such. The premise is that Madeline is capable of entering a crouch state when in midair. Pair crouch state with a dash, boom, crouch dash. It can be done manually by pressing down right before you dash in a non-downward direction, but in 1.4.0.0, they added a binding for it, thankfully. Oh God. Sorry, if you're playing on not the Switch or PC, you poor soul, since they have not updated to this version yet for other platforms. Why is it important for Madeline to enter the crouch state while dashing in the air? Well, let's crouch on the ground and see what happens. You see that green box on Madeline? That's her hurt box. If we crouch, it shrinks a few pixels, which means vertically she's safer from dying. Now, observe this massive cluster of dust bunnies. Does it look like there's a way through? Look closer. Closer! Ah, ah, here we go. If you compare that gap in the bunnies to the height of Madeline's hurt box when she's crouched, you can see that she's just able to fit through the gap. Being able to get through this gap means you can save 10 to 12 whole seconds optimally and avoid two entire rooms. And trust me, these rooms are annoying. You do not want to go through these rooms. But how do you set up that kind of precise demo in order to get through? Well, this video is long. So if you like the content and my explanation to these concepts, it would mean a lot if you left a like and subscribe to the channel. While this video is just to introduce the basics of a few mechanics, I'll have future ones going more in depth on how to actually execute many of these strats. That's enough for Demo Dashes and my shameless plug. The rest of this video will be focused on exploiting a lot of the weird behaviors with jumping in Celeste. You'd think that jumping is straightforward, right? Wrong. Everything is broken in this game, even being able to jump. Don't believe me? Just know that this is possible. And this. And this. And even this? It's all dumb, and a lot of it's not practical. But... There are some very practical uses of this tech within speedrunning, some of which is very advanced and not going to be part of this video. Let's start with the mechanic Celeste eventually teaches you. If you've played through Chapter 7b, you already know this. If not, I recommend you try it. This is a wall bounce. Some people call it wounce, but please don't, don't call it a wounce. You kind of just fly off a wall and honestly, my first time seeing this was possible deeply confused me. It's okay. Lots of things in this game don't make sense. Just follow along. When dashing straight up and next to a wall, there's a window where if you input a jump, you'll maintain some of your momentum 
from the dash since you'll be in the dash state and propel yourself away from the wall and much higher than if you were to do a standard jump. The entire any percent route is full of wall bounces, but the most fascinating use of this mechanic is in between transition screens. The game remembers your momentum and your state from screen to screen. So whether it's catapulting yourself with a Kevin or using a wall bounce, as long as you're still in a dash state when traveling into the next screen, you'll still be able to use it to your advantage. This works for hypering or supering horizontally from one room into another as well. Executing this mechanic between screens is very similar to regular execution. The only difference is that you must wait to input a jump until after the transition concludes. It is also possible to buffer a jump a little bit before the transition has concluded. So for example, in chapter 1A, if you input an up dash and wait for the transition, you can press jump and fling yourself to the other wall with no problem. Again, it's all about being in the right state at the right time. No, not that kind of state. All right, let's get into something a little more simple. Grab the wall, then run out of your stamina. You can climb jump a few times just to speed up the process. Now, if you try climb jumping with no stamina, you'll just catapult off the wall. But sometimes we need to be able to scale walls despite not having enough stamina, whether it's for a strat or if we fall in somewhere we need to recover. Neutral jumping is the answer to these problems. Whether you have stamina or not, neutral jumping works. While it's slower than a climb jump, they require no stamina and only a bit of practice to pull off. To execute a neutral jump, let go of the grab button, jump while your movement controls are neutral, then motion back towards the wall. If you still have stamina, you'll be able to cling to the wall again. Without using any stamina, you have scooched up higher along the wall. Well, what if you don't have any stamina? Not to worry. Neutrals will work as often as you are able to execute them. In any percent using chapter 6a, this wall is a breeze to climb up without using the feather. In other categories, scaling the left wall with neutrals to reach the room at the top is actually faster than grabbing the two feathers on the right side. Congrats! Now you can scale any wall without any stamina. We're in the final stretch, kiddos, so buckle up. Let's think. What else can we use jumping for? Remember when configuring controls I suggested two jump buttons? Well, let's make use of them. Again, jumping is janky. So janky, in fact, that multiple executions of a jump along a wall or other places like corners can have very unusual results. Take this room in Chapter 3A, for instance. Depending on which order you did the rooms in Huge Mess, go bottom row for any percent first, please, thanks. You'll have different layouts in this room, but it won't matter, I promise. We need to get up there from down here, and we need to do it as fast as possible. Well, this is going to be weird, and it'll take some getting used to figure out the exact timing when practicing, but bear with me. You need to jump up to this corner right here. Don't worry, the spikes won't bite. They won't hurt because spikes can only kill you in one direction. If you're moving in the same direction as the way the spikes are pointing, you won't get hit by them. That is the only way this trick is able to work in the first place. Once you get close enough to the corner, while holding the first jump button, press your second jump button when you hit the corner, and you'll propel yourself from the spike wall and end up high enough to execute an up dash to get to the top of the room. This requires practice. While it may seem like one of the more difficult strats to pull off in the beginning, it becomes a consistent and integral strat in no time. Let's change the scenery real quick. Ah, much better. Here's another corner kick we definitely want to use to save some precious time. But we can't exactly get to the corner in the same way as chapter 3. The corner is too high and there's a wall in the way. Actually, that wall is going to be very critical to this strat. The corner kick itself will be the same as the one in Chapter 3A, but this setup is a little bit more complex. You can take a second to climb onto the wall and memorize the location that works when jumping off and executing the corner kick, but that wouldn't be very chat of us, would it? It's actually pretty simple to practice and get the hang of the faster method. Hold to the right when jumping off the wall to get the ideal wall kick from this location here. Then use the second jump button to corner kick and dash upward into the next area. Remember to keep holding the first jump button when you press the second. The exact timing for these jumps will once again be something to practice in order to get right, but it'll be a huge benefit in order to get lower speed run times. 
There's a few more corner kicks, which are also fairly decent time saves, but once again, those will have to be covered in another video since they are much more complex and require a bit of familiarity with corner kicks to begin with. And with that, we have covered everything you will need to know to begin your Celeste speedrunning journey. If you enjoy watching others who speedrun the game, try to keep these strats in mind and watch when and how higher level runners implement them. I'm currently on my own journey getting lower times on Twitch whenever I have the chance. Watching other runners and practice will be the biggest factors in developing your game as a Celeste speedrunner. There are plenty of helpful people in the community who are more than willing to help those getting into the game or trying to get more advanced with movement. And with that, you've made it to the end of the video. I just want to say thank you. I hope there was plenty of helpful information here that has maybe convinced you to pick up speedrunning Celeste or even trying some of the harder mods that are out there. There's so much room to grow both skillfully and as a community. I just have to thank my friend Cheesy Pie for gifting me such a beautifully intricate game that I have not been able to put down since starting it just a few months ago, and by extension led me to make this video in hopes it would inspire others to pick up the game and mess around with its in-depth mechanics as well. I'd also like to thank everyone here who helped me with various bits of information and script checking to make sure I got this information right for all of you. Check them out, and while you're at it, why not check me out on Twitch, Fiverr, Patreon, all the good stuff, and I'll hopefully be seeing you all next time. Bye bye